So I would say I hung out with my family. Me too! And Jordan would link arms. And so there's going to be multiple people who hung out with their family, so it's going to be like not like a fight to the death situation, <laughs> but whoever like comes up and links first gets to link arms. You're going to have some students that are going to be like, oh darn, like stuff like that. So you just want to kind of like make your students feel like, oh hey, you like not force them, but force them to find commonalities amongst each other. And again, because the goal of these icebreakers is to build community and to find ways to build community with our classes, um, please share your name when you share. Okay, what questions do you have before we break up into groups? Okay, sweet. So like a group back here. go through and introduce themselves and say what position they have. Okay. So I'm Kelsey and I'm the historian. I'm Katie and I'm the president. I'm Allison and I'm the business director. I'm Megan and I'm president-elect. I'm Nevin and I'm the secretary. <laughs> professors coming and we actually have um, the infamous Norma Bailey coming to talk about poverty on March 4th which is exciting there. Um, and then another big one that I want to talk about, we have the Mansi Pollock presentation on there. Um, we'll get into Mansi more later but that one there is going to be one of our like fun ones again where we all bring dishes, eat lots of yummy food and talk about it. Um, and then the big highlight one here, we actually have Jack Berkmeyer coming. Um, those of you that have gone to conferences before probably know that name. But if not, just go on Google and look up his name and you'll see how big of a deal he is. Um, within the education world, he's written books, done speeches all over the country and big things like that. And he's actually speaking at the, our state conference for middle level. Um, and we actually have him coming to our organization personally. So it's a really, really big deal. Um, that's why I have him on here for here. Um, we are opening it up beyond our group here. So we're hoping to invite all education students to come see him. So if you have any other friends aren't in middle level specifically, Tell them to come. It's going to be a really, really awesome thing. Um, and then aside from that, we have our principal panel, which is always really fun. Um, you can ask them any questions about employment or what they're looking for and different things like that. So yeah, I mean, reading through there, um, we have a lot of big things coming. And then the last event we have is we always do like a picnic at the end of the year to celebrate our whole organization. Yay, calendar. <laughs> That's it. Okay. So we are here to talk about dues and attendance. So I'll let Devin start with this. <laughs> All right. That lovely calendar that Kelsey just highlighted for you. I mean, look at the very bottom date, that April 22nd. That is the only day that does not count toward your attendance when you come, because that is a social. All the rest of these days count toward, our, they are the start days if you've been here past semesters. And basically, in order to be an active member in CMLA, you need to attend five of the starred meetings. So five of the meetings that are not April 22nd <laughs> count towards your attendance. And so today counts. Four more meetings and you're an active member this semester. Hooray. <laughs> also, if you missed a meeting, um, you can feel free to make up one meeting with via our video membership. So how that works um, is if you send cmlacmu.cmish or at cmish.edu, um, an email saying, hey, this is the day I missed, can I get the link to the video? We will shoot you that link, and then that counts as a made-up day. So really, the way that you can think of it is you have to be here for minimum three in-person meetings and one video meeting. Or so. Four in-person meetings, one video. Well, they can miss one, right? Oh, yeah, wait, they have to be Yeah, fine. yeah, yeah, no, no, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine, I'm a math minor. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I'm not a um, Also, dues for the semester. For those of you who paid for the full year, you are all set for the semester. Um, for those of you who are new members, this semester would be $25. Um, those are due March 4th. And just as a reminder of these benefits of membership, um, you get access to conferences, access to AMLE publications, which is our national organization. Um, in addition to that, you also get really awesome volunteering opportunities and experiences. Um, two, one thing that we will kind of be talking about later on this semester is if you are an active member for two semesters, you are eligible to be put on our grad letter. This is one of our biggest 
um, things that we kind of like to show off because it's a letter that gets sent to all of the principals or the middle level principals in Michigan that gives them kind of a rundown of all the activities we've done, um, all the workshops you attended, things like that. So it's a really awesome opportunity. Um, also, before I move on, well, before I move on, what questions do you have about dues or membership at this point? We're throwing so much information at you right now. Yeah, yeah. Where do we pay the dues? Good question. Um, it can be paid uh, to either one of us via check or cash, and it would just be made to CMLA CMU. Yeah. What other questions might you have going on? Okay. Also, for those of you who attended the national conference, I know that you have been getting lots of information about paying back like the 50 or $60 um, that you were receiving from SBAC. That is no longer a requirement. SBAC is going back to our funds. So for those of you who may have already paid that $50, uh, you will get refunded. So just a heads up. What questions do you have about that? I know it's kind of a last minute confusing thing. Yeah, I'm getting you. refunded. No, um, we'll give you cash back. Okay. So whatever, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever form that you paid us, we'll give that okay. to you. Or if you'd rather have a check, or if you'd rather have cash, let us know. Um, but yeah, good question. <laughs> All right, now Allison is going to come up and talk to you guys about the awesome t-shirts we have. And quarter zips, like this. <laughs> All right, um, so we're going to start off early this year and start selling t-shirts at the first meeting. That's why I'm here. Um, so I am wearing one of the, the crew necks we have. Sam has the other crew neck back there if you guys want to take a look. And Katie's also wearing a t-shirt, one of the many t-shirts we have. And Devin's wearing the quarter zip. Um, so I have all the designs and t-shirt prices here. I'm going to pass them around. Um, I'm going to be staying after the meeting for a couple minutes if you want to go ahead and sign up. Um, I'll be here next week, too, if you want to buy them then. Um, all the money that we raise for the t-shirts goes back towards you guys. We try to help you out with the conferences and putting on these different sessions that we have every other week. Um, so all the money that you spend towards t-shirts technically goes right back towards the organization, which benefits you guys. Does that make sense? So is there any questions you guys have about t-shirts, anything like that? Yeah. <coughs> what? No, you pay when the t-shirts come in, so you don't have to worry about paying tonight. Any other questions? No? Okay, I'm going to send it over to Allie for volunteering. Okay, so Jordan touched on volunteering a little bit, and this is something that we definitely pride ourselves in in this organization, because as teachers, we, you all know we have to fight for our jobs, and we all want to stand out with like resumes and things like that. And what CMLA does is, well, what I do, is I contact all the principals around like Mount Pleasant area, and then I like basically say, hey, if you have any opportunities that like we can get our organizing in, like organization into like holler at your girl let me do it so I have like compiled all of these and these are all like long-term semester opportunities so these might be um, lunch supervision like recess supervision tutoring things like that and so I have this handy sheet if you guys can just like go through and like look at your planner and then look at this and kind of compare the two and like sign up for as much as you can and um, if something doesn't work out, you can always email CMLA or email me, whatever. Um, yeah, while I'm passing these out, I'm actually going to like ask some people like if they want to share some of the volunteering experiences that they've already like had through CMLA, just so like maybe the newer numbers can kind of get a gist of what's going on. Um, yeah, and these are just like long term right now. Okay. Jordan. Um, actually, one of my first semesters with CMLA CMU, I went to Mary McGuire, and I was a lunchtime tutor, so I went there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, so I worked with, I think, one lunch of fifth graders and two lunch of sixth graders. Um, and basically what happened was is these were students that needed to make up homework, or they missed days, or things like that. Um, sometimes it was a lunchtime detention, but most of the time it was just homework makeup. Um, it was just a really awesome opportunity, because a lot of times you saw the same students, don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but you develop relationships with them. And it was really um, just getting that hands-on experience. Definitely the thing that made me look forward to my Tuesdays and Thursdays. And that relationship thing is like a huge thing because um, I like tutored at Farwell and I got really close to, with Farwell, I think it says on there, um, you basically get one student throughout the whole semester that you work one-on-one -on, -one on with how many days you can. Um, my student, you can just tell that he like didn't come from the best home life. He was like really rough and tough around the edges. 
at the end I brought him like cops and donuts. He gave me the biggest hug. He like, oh my gosh, like if you want your heart to melt, like work with these kids. It's so, oh, it's so great and like so like fulfilling and everything. Allison, did you want to add something? Oh no, I have done a couple uh, long-term volunteering. I did what she did with Farwell, um, and I worked with the same student every week. And you know, like just reiterating what Jordan said, you build that relationship with the student, and they form that trust with you. Um, and he was very sad to see me go at the end, and he <coughs> went up to his teacher and requested me to come back the following semester. And unfortunately, it didn't work out with my schedule. But it's just those relationships; it's the more experience you can get in the classroom, it's really, really beneficial. So. And um, don't like worry if you can't really uh, commit to like a long-term thing. Um, if you know that you can go to most of them, but maybe there's just like a couple days that you won't be able to, that's fine. In um, my eyes and most of the principal's eyes, they like would rather have you there 75% of the time than 0% of the time, so just keep that in mind. Um, with that being said, we also do have short-term volunteering. These are more like dances that come up and things like that, or just maybe there's like a science night or, or just random like events throughout the week. Uh, we do have two this week. One is on Friday. Normally I give you guys more like a, an advance notice as soon as it's the first week. Um, so this Friday, it's Fun Friday at Fancher. They're looking for so many volunteers because they have an after school party. Um, I assume that there's gonna be like games, dancing, things like that. We all know middle schoolers and chaperones, so there's that. And then also, um, it is on that long-term sheet, but Saturday school starts this, the 24th, which is this Saturday. So if you guys are kind of busy throughout the week but you really want to volunteer, Saturday is definitely an option. It's 9 to 11. Um, I'm going to pass this around. There is only one sheet, so let's just be conscious of both sides. So. Yeah, so Katie, you want to talk about Mamsie? I would love to. <laughs> okay, guys, so I have super exciting news to share with you all. Okay, so this semester, March 13th and 14th, is the MAMSI Conference in Lake Orion. <laughs> and extra super cool news, Jack Bergmeier is the keynote speaker at this whoop, whoop. conference as well. So, big draw of the conference. It's a really, really um, great conference. I've been twice, and it's a great opportunity to network and get to know professionals in the state. Um, you just meet a lot of really cool people, and you get to attend some really cool sessions and learn great things about middle level education and about education in general. So just a couple logistical things. What you're gonna find on the back table after we're done with the meeting, there's two pieces of paper and they're um, right back to back so you just grab the first, like the top two pieces of paper off of the stack. And the first one is just our information about the Nancy Conference in general and the second is the registration form. So on this first page, it says where the conference is and what it is. And um, uh, unfortunately, it is during the last weekend of spring break this year, so if you already have plans to be gone, I'm very sad that you can't come with us because it would be really cool if you could, but if you're like me and you're like, wow, I'm just going to sit at home during spring break, now you have something awesome to look forward to. So we have, um, it's the last Friday, Saturday of spring break, and we don't want to ask everyone to come back to Central just to carpool down to Lake Orion, that'd be kind of silly. So what we're going to do instead is if you sign up for this at our meeting before we all um, go for spring break, we'll just see what type of areas people are coming from and then you can kind of work out a little carpooling system uh, that way. So you can drive yourself down absolutely and we can just meet down there or you can have the opportunity to carpool with other people coming from similar areas. Otherwise, um, we are going to be staying in a church or a school in the area, so housing will be of no cost to all of you, and um, what you're going to need to pay is, if you're going for both days, the Friday and Saturday, it's $65, and if you're just going for the Friday or Saturday, just one day, um, you're going to pay $45. So that is due along with your registration to me by February 18th. And um, what you're going to do is on this form, all you need to do is fill out this little top part, and then when you turn it in, I'll show you which box to check. <coughs> so you're just going to have to do your name, and then you'll say Central Michigan University for the school. And then for school district, just put like a little line through it. You don't have to fill that out. But yep, just fill the rest of that, turn this in with your payment by February 18th, and you'll be all set to go. Otherwise, if you have any questions, you can ask me now, or you can email me, or you can call me, or you can text me, or you can see me here. There are so many options, but I'm your go-to girl for this one, so my number is there at the bottom. What questions might you have at this time? Cool, okay. So I will have these sheets back for you at the end of the meeting. And now I think we are on to the fresh starts portion of our evening. So what I'm going to do is there's going to be four stations. Okay, so we're gonna do one, two, three, 
four. And we're going to count off right now to get into what station you'll be going to first, okay? So we'll start over here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Hello, I'm Devin, um, and the activity that our group is doing right now involves everyone rips a piece of paper in half, and on one part of it they write everything good that happened last semester, everything that like they were really hard on and it went well, everything that just kind of happened to go well by chance, just every single thing they can think of from last semester. And they set that aside, and then they write down everything bad that happened last semester, everything that is still like weighing on their mind, weighing on their heart, um, and it can be related to school, it can be related to their personal life, whatever, and also this is completely confidential, no one will read it but them. And then when students are done with this act with writing down everything bad that happened, we ask them to crumple it up and talk to and it. Basically, this is just a concrete like symbol of taking the things that are weighing on you, things that are worries from last semester, and literally throwing them away because those are done. For right now, you can just focus on the current semester, on what you're doing, on what you need to do to get things done. But we still have the list of good things because those are like positive things are things you can dwell on, that it's healthy to dwell on. And we thought this was really good for middle schoolers because middle schoolers, in their concrete thought, like it's just, it's so good for them to have a concrete means of being able to literally see their problems being thrown thrown away. Or in some in some cases this activity involves burning, but you know, fire coats. So we wouldn't recommend burning unless you have you know you're outdoors. But yeah, that's our activity. Thanks Evan. Yay. So we are doing a post-it reflection activity here. So we have different prompts going on here that relate to student behavior stuff, student norms, and then what students expect out of teachers. So basically this the students will go around in the classroom and they can write their, their responses on post-it notes so it's more anonymous. And then afterwards, we can reflect as a class on what their responses were. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. This activity is called Snowball Fight. And what we did is we gave everyone um, a writing utensil, the same one, a pencil, and then also a piece of paper. And what they're going to do is write either something they're excited about, nervous about, struggling with, something for the semester ahead. So this is an anonymous activity. So at the same time, everybody is going to crumple theirs up and have a snowball fight, which means we either decide to throw them in the air, pick up a different paper that's not our own, and then read the topics and discuss them as a group with um, using the window technique as a kind of time control for discussion. Hi, I'm Jordan, and as you can see, what my group's working on right now is drawing a picture of a um, student that just really gets on my nerves, a student that really irks them and has habits that are really distracting. Uh, so as you can see with my student, I described a student that I did, worked with while um, I was pre-student teaching. He was a great kid, but he just had so many things going on. IEP troubles, no family life. Um, came to class unprepared, made a lot of noise, was really distracting. So what I'd like to be able to do is kind of take this time just to vent about their student. And then what we did is we flipped it over, and I'm not done with mine because I have too many things to say about him, um, and think about all the positives that you can about your student. So really take the time and put those negatives into positives. Um, this is a good actually for you to do at the start of every semester. Just kind of give your students the opportunity to make a fresh start. Be able to flip that page on your student and see them in a different light. We've got some great ideas for our fresh start stations, either ideas to start a new year or to uh, come back from the holidays and kind of get your class refocused and re-energized. Can I get a couple volunteers to share something that they learned at their stations today? How about we have three people share? So far we have none, so three would be delightful. Andrew. It's really a relief at this station that I was right here that you can just write everything that made you feel like shit at um, last semester. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>
this video is gonna be. We're going to and, um, time. So and, we're going to go this way. Okay, I'm just gonna kill time real quick while she's talking. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll edit this out. Yeah. So roll it up, toss it in the recycle bin. So, um, really fun. Cool. So, um, as you can see, I'm a person. Um, it's things that could get into their headspace. Can you start this over? <laughs>